Dr. Hendricks, what is teeth in 24 hours? Do you do it? Is this something that you recommend? If you don't do it, what makes your experience different than others? Okay, so let's talk about this. Permanent teeth within 24 hours. Is it something that I do in my practice? No, I don't. I actually do not provide a permanent device in 24 hours. But if you watch my YouTube channel and on Facebook and through social media, we do do teeth within 24 hours. It's just not their permanent teeth. And why? Why is it that permanent teeth within 24 hours is a bad idea? Or let's say it this way. Why is it so difficult and likely from a consumer's perspective, why would you be taking a much bigger risk doing this versus the traditional route of going into a temporary and then transitioning into the permanent device? There's some things that really define what is permanent. First of all, the material of choice. If the material doesn't last long enough, then it really can't be considered permanent. To provide teeth in 24 hours, oftentimes many of these clinics are not using materials that withstand function, withstand grinding, chewing, things like this, and the teeth will wear down very quickly. And so the definition of permanent has to be really weighed here. And I, I'm telling you, there are a lot of offices out there. There's, I believe there's offices here in Utah. This is how it's kind of come to my attention where these clinics that are promoting permanent teeth in 24 hours are saying that you get the strongest teeth that are available in 24 hours. And this is ridiculous. You cannot provide someone the strongest teeth that we, you know, the strongest material in 24 hours. Why? Because the strongest material is not a matter up for like debate. It's, 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 there's only one material that is super, super strong and can be considered the strongest material out there. And that's zirconia. And zirconia, if you put it through the timeline of how quickly it can be done, minimally, if, in other words, if you weren't sleeping at all and you had a technician in your office the whole time and not going home, it would take a minimal four days to be able to process that. But if you take time to, uh, to go through that process, then it ends up being more like a week. Okay. So, Number one is what is the type of material? You know, you have to ask these kind of questions when you're talking to clinics like this. Number two, does it meet the standards of cleansability? So here's the thing. If you have your teeth extracted on one day, you have implants placed, and then the permanent teeth given the following day, can you imagine there's going to be a lot of healing after that period? And so they're going to fit these teeth to gums and bone that has not healed. And so over time, over the next three, four, five months, the gums will change. The bone will change. There are implants that may not take. And at the end of the day, you're going to end up with a device in six months where you're getting tons of food caught up under it. And so if it hasn't been calculated to have that device changed or modified, then again, is it better to have a device modified after the fact or have it made 100% right the first time? But you can add material to some of these devices um, in the future. It's just, it's not the same as getting the device made all at once, okay? It's kind of like when you add mortar on top of mortar, it, it, it never goes on with the same strength as the first layer. And why? Because the material's been sitting in the mouth for, you know, four to six months. It does absorb moisture. And therefore, to try to add to it, it's not going to add as well. And it may not be as hygienic. And it changes the overall feel and fit of the device. Number two, does it meet the standards of functionality? And what do I mean by this? Well, a lot of the patients that come into my office that want to do this treatment, they don't have a very good bite. They've lost most of their teeth and so their jaw is hinged forward. And when they chew and eat, oftentimes it's really, really hard for them because they don't know where their bite's at. Yeah. And so do you think that we can actually return someone back to a perfect bite in 24 hours? Why has it become difficult? Well, the muscles and the joints, if they've been sitting in a state of confusion for six to eight months to years to decades, and now we change it into just one option, how likely is it gonna be the right bite? Now, so can it happen? Yes, of course it can. But is it, is it really challenging? Is it likely that it may not end up perfect? Highly likely. Because at the end of the day, a bite is something that changes over time. And so if you wanna have the most, the most efficient, most functional bite, then this is something where if you've been without teeth for a long time, then you need to basically go into a training device to get the bite right and then go into the permanent. Now last, does it meet the standards of cosmetics? If you've had a poor smile for so long, you've been hiding it. Your lips, your muscles, your facial muscles, they don't move like they did when you were 16, 17 and loved your smile. You've been hiding for so long that your muscles literally, they're like working against you. So now when you go to smile, 
it's hard because your muscles don't even work. You, you like unconsciously programmed your whole face to, to, to pull a certain way. So what's the problem with this is when they take the records to make this permanent device in 24 hours, is it likely that you're going to be able to smile the right way? Is it likely going to be the smile that you're going to have in six months after you've been wearing something that you're not embarrassed by? So the first thing is that it's not likely they're able to capture your face and your muscles and your expressions the way they're going to be in the future because you've been hiding them so much. Number two is this. Do you really know what you want? And this is something I've learned over time, meaning that if you've been hiding your smile, if it's been a really hard, hard life and you never felt like you even liked your smile, is it likely that you're going to know what your smile ideally is going to look like? Meaning that 24 hours, if they put something in, it looks different. Initially, you may say, gosh, I love it. And you may even get emotional and cry. But then as time goes by and you look and compare yourself to others and go, wow, you know what? My teeth, they're, they're a little bit wider than I expected. Now I think about it. You know, I take pictures. The, the light hits it a certain way. It doesn't look as natural. You know, initially it felt like it was really good, but now, now the inflammation swelling's gone down. It seems like my lips have popped out too much. You know, initially I thought that uh, the bite was good, but now I realize that I have a gap completely on the side. And this is why I believe that cosmetically, it's hard for a doctor, even as good as we are, and I think I'm a pretty dang good doctor, it's hard for me to know what you're going to want in your smile. You don't even know. If you don't know, what's the chances I know? And that's why I tell my patients, trust me. Let me show you what I think it's going to, it's going to look good. And then after you have a chance to wear it and look at it in different lights, look around different people, you have a chance to eat with it, you have a chance to experience you know, your, your life with it, then you come back and you give me feedback. And then we change it to the permanent. So that's the biggest difference between my clinic and some of these 24 hour clinics. It's that we do it differently because not because we can't turn around a permanent smile in 24 hours, albeit not the strongest material, but you could turn around something that is strong enough to be considered a permanent device. But I don't do it because I'm not okay with settling with just a B average. And I feel like if you do 24 hour smiles every day, um, if you do, if you choose that, then, um, you're going to end up likely with something that could be better. So why do pe people pick the 24 hour smile? Because it sounds amazing, right? It sounds too good to be true. And, and honestly, I really believe it is. There are some clinics that truly are so good that I believe they get it to like a B plus, maybe even A minus. But because of the things I've talked to you about right now, because of the type of material and how, much, how long it's going to wear and talking about the cleansability and talking about the functionality and talking about the cosmetics, can you truly get all that perfect in 24 hours? Does it make reasonable sense? You have to be careful. You have to ask lots and lots of questions because some people out there are okay with giving bees. They're okay with giving average smiles. But when time goes on and you're not happy with that smile, what will this clinic do? Are they going to come back and redo that smile for you? How much did you pay for this smile? Did you expect it to be perfect and then realize that it isn't? Well, this is why at Dream Dental, we don't provide 24 hour smiles, permanent smiles in 24 hours. We don't do it because I believe patients should have a chance to see their smile. They should have a chance to experience it. I believe that we should wait till the gums to heal and the bone to heal. I believe that functionally it takes time to get the bite right if you've had teeth that have come out over the years and your bite has shifted. I believe that cosmetically, I don't even know what you want. How likely is it that you know what you want? How likely is it that your smile is going to change in four to six months because you finally aren't hiding your smile and you finally start smiling? Let me tell you about a patient. I mean, I get emotional thinking about some of the people I've worked with, but there's a gal that came through my office and um, she thought for sure she knew what she wanted in her smile. She'd been struggling with, with gum disease and broken teeth. She was roughly my age, actually about two years younger than me. Her dad knew my dad growing up and that's how she got in contact with me. Well, we sat down and we talked about her smile. They decided to invest in it and we went through the process of going through pre-surgery, taking the calculations and then doing surgery and I provided her what we thought was the perfect smile. Okay. It was a temporary, of course, because that's the way we do it here. And the, the, the defining thing about this gal was that she, she showed a lot of gums. And so in the pre-surgery, when we were talking about what she wanted in the gums, she said, yeah, you know, I've always had a lot of gums. I really don't want to show gums like I, 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 I have my whole life. And so when we did do the, the work, we changed it. So she showed no gums at all. And it was a very challenging surgery for those who want to do that. It's not easy, but we, we, we really knocked it out of the park and I was so happy with this smile and she was too. So 
The day after we show her her smile, she's emotional crying, and it's it's a life-changing experience for her. Now let's fast forward four months. She comes into my office for final, so for testing day and for calculations, and I ask her, Megan, do you want to keep your smile the same? Do you want to change anything? And she said, you know, Brian, I used to think I, I kind of resented the gummy smile, but doc, I actually want to bring gums back into my smile. I found out that I, I actually, when I look in the mirror, I want that. I, it reminds me of who I truly am. And so maybe I don't want as much gums, but can we bring back a little bit of gums? And so we went through some try-ins and changed it. So now she had some gums and she's like, thank you so much because she got her dream teeth and she didn't even know what her dream teeth were eventually, you know, originally. And again, experience like this and many other experiences just like it have taught me that every patient is different. And so you have to be so careful when you're thinking about doing this all on four treatment. It is an amazing treatment. But if you're getting your dream smile, why rush it? You know, if they take the same fee and do the same thing, but they do it in two days versus 10 days, like you're cutting out eight appointments. It's funny because I've listened to some of the interviews of the clinics here in Utah and they actually talk about in these interviews how it saves them money to do it in two days. You don't want to hear that from the clinic that's taking all this money from you. What you want to hear is we want to, we will keep moving forward and making changes until we get it right. And this is what I tell my patients is that until you look in the mirror and go, wow, I love it. I love it. That moment is the moment I say, okay, we're there. But you don't know what you like until you experience what you don't like. You don't go and just marry the first person you meet. You date a few. And that's what makes it powerful. And so my advice to everyone out there is looking to have their life transformed with this treatment. It's worth it. I know it's a lot of money. I know that it is emotionally expensive too. I know it takes a lot of courage. But don't rush something. Because at the end of the day, the doctors that are the best do not rush it. If they're going to build you a Mercedes, they want the time. You paid for it. You paid for this time. So take it. Don't complain about the doctor wanting to do one more appointment, or one more trying. Because at the end of the day, it's your smile. So work with a doctor that's committed to you, that's committed to giving you your life-changing dream smile. This is what I want to kind of tell you guys, that permanent teeth in 24 hours, is it a good idea for most patients? I would say no. I think it's better to find a doctor that's willing to put you into two questions you can ask these clinics that do permanent teeth in 24 hours. If you're currently signed up with them or have already started with them, these are the questions that I would make sure I get answered and get in writing before you continue treatment. Number one, doc, I want to know the exact type of material that you're using for my permanent teeth. Okay. I say doc because sometimes these clinics have a person that is selling it. It's their consultation person. This needs to come out of the doctor's mouth himself. Okay, so he needs to tell you the exact material that they're using and ask him this question. How long will this last? What has been shown? What has been proven? If they're using a new material that sounds great, what is the data on it? Is it three to five years? A lot of devices being done with all on four treatment these days have a life of literally three to five years. And that meets the standard of care, believe it or not. But a lot of people are putting their life savings into this and they want something that's gonna last a lot longer than three to five years. Okay, the second thing I think you should ask and get in writing is what does it cost for modifications in the future? Meaning if you aren't able to clean it very well and it's packing food everywhere underneath, what does it cost to have a new set made that goes down all the way to the gums? Or what does it cost to add material? If you're okay with them just adding more mortar on top of it to your new expensive car, just throwing mortar onto it, what does that cost? Okay, um, what does it cost if worst case scenario happens and you have implants that don't heal? Which is a viable question. Sometimes implants don't heal. And especially if patients aren't on a soft diet and they're not being told to be on a completely soft diet. Okay, number three I would ask is what does it cost to maintain this device for cleanings, for maintenance visits, for visits when the device starts to get loose, which these are things that actually really do happen. In, in certain cases, and I'd wanna know how much it costs. When officers don't have answers to these questions, they're either so young, they've been around for so little time, they haven't experienced it, that's not a good thing. But if they have the answer that, you know, they tell you actually the cost of maintenance and it's really, really high, because truthfully, they don't wanna take care of you, they don't want to maintain your device, 
these clinics have a different approach. They're basically trying to get you to do the surgery, have the device put in, and then raise the price so that you go somewhere else. So when you do start to experience problems in the future, it's not going to be with them. So these are things you should know about. I do believe that answering, having, you know, writing down questions, I hope that when you watch my YouTube videos, I, I often tell you this is what you should ask. But write this down and then be bold enough to say, you know what, I appreciate answering that question. I would feel much better if you just put this into my financial agreement. That it talks about, you know, you know, the, the expected amount of time this is going to last. Now, even in my office, I can't tell you how long every device is going to last. What I can tell you is this. The material that I use is the strongest in dentistry. The material has the ability to last your life. Okay, it's the implants that are built inside of your human body. If those are maintained, if you take care of them and you stay healthy, then the device will stay strong enough to last forever. If you come to your maintenance visits to make sure your screws are tight and you're not grinding and clenching and doing naughty stuff, <laughs> right? Then the device will last. Now, I give that in writing to my patients because I believe in it. I stand behind it. And so you should ask these sorts of questions to this clinic and ask them to the doctor. And is this doctor an owner? Is he going to be there in three to five years? If he's not, then let's get the writing and the people that's going to be there. If it's a big corporate company and it's owned by people that aren't even doctors, this could be concerning too. So again, I'm just trying to help people understand that this type of treatment is becoming very, very popular. There are doctors out there that are well-intentioned that work for companies that aren't well-intentioned, meaning their, their, their life mission, the business mission isn't necessarily to change lives, is to change their financial lives. And so I believe that anytime you pick a company that it should be doctor operated, doctor owned, because doctors picked the mission. They, they chose dentistry because they want to change lives. If someone just bought the business and they own it and they're not even a doctor, they, they may have different mission, you know, and, and it may not be to change your life long term. It may be to take your money and then in the future make it so hard for you to come back and pay for maintenance, so hard to pay for modifications, so, so hard to be able to maintain and ultimately this dream smile that looked good initially becomes something that is a nightmare in the future. I hope this doesn't become you. That's why I have made this video to demystify and clarify what is teeth in 24 hours. Let me just say one last thing. I pride myself on the fact that if you go to my website and you go to my smile reveals, the live reveals, all these, the teeth that you see most of the time are all temporaries because I believe that our temporaries are as good as most people's finals. You want a doctor like that. I'm not the only one that does great work. There's so many amazing doctors out there, good friends of mine, but the common thread is they are committed to excellence. They're committed to your dream smile, not what's easiest for them, not selling you a dream about <laughs> doing everything in two visits. Two visits are going to change your life forever. So I hope this hits home. I'm so grateful for you listening to me. Please subscribe to my channel so you can get updates. I've been showing live videos often about surgery and with live complications so that you can continue to learn and understand what to look for when you're trying to find the right clinic for you. If you do want to come into my clinic and get a consultation, it, the below in the description below, please click on the link. We'll get you set up. I'd love to meet you. God bless you. I hope to see you soon. Thank you.